In the previous video, we talked about how you should be cautious about effects that are small, especially when the data are noisy. But I don't want you to get the idea that you should never trust small effects. Under the right conditions, small effects can be real and very meaningful. As an example, let's go through another study from my lab, which was conducted by a postdoc named Risa Sawaki. This study looked at the capture of attention by a salient stimuli. When you have a uniquely colored item in a relatively homogeneous background, like this red tulip, it just seems to pop out from the background and automatically capture your attention. Here's an orientation example. You can't help but notice the tilted bar among all the vertical bars. When you have one item that differs from a relatively homogeneous background, we call that item a singleton. This is an orientation singleton, and this is a color singleton. Phenomenologically, singletons seem to automatically capture attention. However, laboratory studies have produced mixed results, and there has been a big theoretical disagreement since the early 1990s about whether singletons automatically capture attention. Risa wanted to use ERPs to provide new evidence. In particular, she wanted to use the N2PC component, which reflects the focusing of attention onto a lateralized object. If singletons automatically capture attention, then they should elicit an N2PC even if their task irrelevant. So, Risa designed the experiment shown here. Subjects viewed a sequence of displays, each of which was presented for only 200 milliseconds. At the beginning of each block of 56 trials, they were told that a particular letter of a particular size would be the target for that block. For example, they might be told that they should look for a large A. The target appeared in 28% of the arrays, and subjects were told to press a button for arrays that contained the target. Because Risa was interested in covert shifts of attention, Subjects were instructed to maintain their gaze on the central fixation point and do the task with their peripheral vision. On some trials, the array contained a red singleton item. The singleton was never the target, and the subjects were informed of that. So, they had no reason to voluntarily focus their attention onto the singleton. But that red item really pops out, doesn't it? So, what do you think? Did the singleton capture attention and produce an NTPC? Let's start by looking at the ERPs to the target, which was the large A in this example. Risa found a very clear N2PC. The voltage was more negative over the contralateral hemisphere than over the epsilateral hemisphere. You can see it even better in the difference wave. The N2PC is way bigger than the pre-stimulus noise. So, as in many previous studies, we can conclude that subjects shifted their covert attention to the target, producing an N2PC. Now let's look at the data from the singleton trials. When Risa first showed these waveforms to me, she said, look, there's a contralateral positivity, not a contralateral negativity. She was very excited because a couple of years earlier, a paper had shown that a contralateral positivity is produced when subjects suppress an object rather than focusing their attention on it. This is called the distractor positivity, or PD. Risa thought she was seeing evidence that people were suppressing the singleton rather than being captured by it. But look at how small that effect is. I wasn't convinced. But then Risa showed me the single subject data, and virtually every subject had the same effect. And when we looked at the difference wave, the effect was clearly larger than the pre-stimulus noise. I was intrigued, but not completely convinced. But then Risa ran a follow-up study and found exactly the same effect. Several papers have now been published showing that singletons elicit a PD rather than an N2PC, and this finding led to behavioral studies providing converging evidence that singletons are actively suppressed under many conditions. So, if you see effects that are small relative to the baseline noise, be suspicious. But if the effects are replicable, they may be telling you something important about how the brain works. In general, you can have a lot more faith in papers that include multiple experiments to show the replicability of the effects.